What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today we are doing our first ever brew review, and this is a rapid fire review of whether it's going to be games, betas, trailers, and you know, game previews overall. And we're going to kind of break this down as a group, whether it's going to be all three of us have partaken in this game or preview before, or at least one of us has to kind of give our our initial impressions, our good and the bad with our rating and whether or not you should buy that game now, buy it later, or just straight up not buy it at all. And we're going to jump right into it. We have obviously have the Mars Man crew along with me, like always. So the first game on the docket is going to be the Diablo 4 beta. And this is obviously the big topic of the of the week, really, of the month. Everyone was looking to see about Diablo 4, whether or not it's going to be a good game, a bad game. You know, following the last few trends of Diablos, it's been... Up in the air, I mean, Diablo Immortal was straight up trash when it came to the, uh, you know, monetization practices, and that's still up in the air for Diablo 4. We haven't really gotten to see the full glimpse of what this game could be, but based on the beta, which you've all played, we actually played it on stream, which you can find that on Twitch in the description below, just a little quick plug in there, but you, you can you can check that out, and, and at the end of the day, we had all played it for several hours, kind of got a good feel about what we think about the game, got through some major portions and i kind of want to get our official good bad and and then we'll jump into our rating so i'll give my first my good and i think honestly multiplayer of, of this beta was fun i think that's probably the strongest thing i think of diablo 4 that it has and you know this just to give a premise we have never played any of the diablo games before this is the first ever diablo game we've ever jumped into maybe that's blasphemy but i'll tell you what playing diablo for the first time Playing with people makes the game feel a lot more fun. And I can imagine that if you're playing this alone, that this might be a little bit tougher to do, right? And granted, it maybe maybe like depends on which class you pick, it makes it a little bit easier for yourself. But overall, like I think um I think Frank, your your class was the what necromancer? Necromancer, or, yeah. Yeah, necromancer. I think if you're playing as necromancer, might make your life a little easier as a group because you're essentially summoning skeletons and the dead to come aid you in your fight. So it's kind of be like you're you kind of have a crew with you. But like if you're playing as like mine, like the brawler, like you're, you know, the bruiser, you're, you're, you're or, sorry, barbarian, you're, you're really running in straight into combat. And it's like you're facing everyone one on one. It's really hard to do that with some of these some of these bosses where you're going to need some help. So multiplayer, I thought was fun. And like I just mentioned, the, the different character builds, I thought they were pretty cool. I know that's always been a staple of Diablo as well as like World of Warcraft, like Blizzard games like that are very pretty much similar when it comes to having builds with different abilities. Diablo 4 did a good job with these different, you know, groups. Um, they all were very distinct. They all have their own specialties. Um, and I like the way they played. I think you, if you have, a, like, the crew we had, I thought we had a good combination between different abilities that each of us possessed. Um, and I thought that was really a good thing. So I want to jump to you guys with your other goods, and then we'll jump into the bads, and then we'll jump into our ratings in the final section. So, Aki, what did you think overall good for this, for Diablo 4 beta? Yeah, so I thought the good was definitely the multiplayer, kind of how you hit on. Um, it was very easy to summon people. And, you know, we all kind of play together. So if I unlock something or I defeat a boss, um, everyone else does, unlike Elden Ring. So I thought the multiplayer was very seamless. And I also thought the cutscene graphics, I'm sure there will be a lot more of them, were very, very good. Um, you know, a little scary too, but the art was uh, very, very well done. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And uh, Langella Kill, what do you think, man? What was your good yeah, for this? Yeah, I agree with you guys. And how about the map? I thought the map, you know, there's a lot of potential with the size of the map and everything that you can do in this world. And I was a fan of the cutscenes as well. And the graphics I thought were pretty solid for the over the top look at Diablo. I know people were trying to compare it to Diablo 3. When you look at Diablo 3 graphics, it was a lot more cartoonish. I mean, this one felt a little more detailed and real. And, and those cutscenes, really brought you in especially the beginning one uh that you see in act one they really brought you into the story like man this is this is pretty interesting and uh you know i think that's kind of what you want for something like this out of act one and again it was a lot i think playing by yourself i think is a lot more grindy and a lot probably more frustrating but playing with players and they kind of entice you to do that right you get an xp boost by playing with player uh playing with teammates and stuff so i think that's a good aspect i think that was the best and most enjoyable part of playing diablo yeah and and with that we also have to think about the bad and the bad for me the servers are a problem i mean granted 
for for me personally so on stream you guys jumped in first before me i basically had to set this up maybe a half an hour before the stream was going to begin in order for me to play with you guys which is I outrageous minute, i had a 40 minute wait and yeah. i know uh hockey you did you have a wait what was your yeah wait? i had a 30 to 40 minute wait uh, it's just it's unfortunate because i know this is a beta like that's the point it, it, you come into the mindset of saying this is not the final product um but the fear is is that you know same thing happened with overwatch 2 right and this is it's the same company right so that means like the servers you possess over at blizzard have problems and the fear that i have is that that these fixes won't be able to be completely done by the time the game releases and that is something i saw that was pretty bad once you got into the game i did there was no problem i can't imagine being somebody that finally gets in the game after 40 minutes of waiting and then gets booted out of the server and then which has to jump back, heard that which that has happened, happened before. Yeah, it didn't happen often, but we've heard that that's happened. Which is outrageous, dude. I, I would be I would be fuming if I was finally got into this whole thing and then I get booted out. So I biggest thing for me is the servers. I mean, like I said, I, I think I could play solo depending on the the uh the type of character I was. I think that would be the big thing for me, but I think the biggest one, biggest negative is the server problem. I'm not sure what you guys think, but so Angelica, what do you think was the bad? Yeah, I agree with you. The server uh, issue. And again, we're talking about a beta. Uh, so, you know, we're a couple months out, but we also ha have less people playing, right? So there was a lot of people playing the beta, but it's not going to be the same amount as when it actually releases um, in June. So can these servers handle the amount of players that are going to be trying to get on to this server um, so that's obviously a huge concern uh, going into this because if the launch is, you know, like we saw with Overwatch 2 where you're in a queue line for an extended period of time, that's going to be a disaster. Um, the second thing to me is bugs. There were definitely bugs. This You definitely saw a lot of beta bugs. Uh, you know, there was a funny one where you guys were in a cutscene. My cutscene ended and I'm getting attacked by people while you guys are in the cutscene. And you could see on stream that was pretty uh, hilarious. Like the items breaking around you while I'm I'm fighting off the villagers, and the villagers are are attacking me, and you guys are stuck in a cutscene, which was pretty freaking hilarious. But there's bugs where I was in, I couldn't hold my weapon for half the time we played on stream. My weapon was missing. I was just carrying. I had nothing in my hand. But I was swinging uh, a weapon around, and that happened almost about half the time. So there were definitely bugs in cutscenes, bugs in the game. Um, that that i ran into yeah so hockey what was your biggest negative here man yeah so we're three for three with the servers um i think the servers take the the top uh top notch with the the bad of the game i guess we can say well you know blizzard had a problem i mean i left my xbox on for overwatch 2 for i think six or seven hours one of the first days uh so it's not as worse as that i mean that was horrifying well that's the pulp right fingers yeah, crossed I mean, yeah, so when the real game that comes point. out you you hope that you don't i mean listen a 30 minute wait it's not the biggest deal obviously if you get in if you don't get kicked out 30 minutes isn't the end of the world um my other thing is i tried to play the game alone by myself i only lasted about 20 or 30 minutes before i started to get bored so i think for me and probably for a, a decent amount of people playing with friends is really um, you know, is, is really where the fun is going to be most of the time. So again, that's just really for me. I'm sure it's going to be for you guys as well. And then, uh, you know, a few other people, but playing with friends is, is where it's going to be at. I got a little bored after about a half an hour by myself. Yeah. And, and so with that being said, I wanted us to give our quick rating. Plus I answered the question of whether you should buy it now, which is like buying on release day, buy it later, wait until after release, or just don't buy it all that it's not good enough for you to even purchase. So I'll give mine first. I think my forecasting of this beta so far experience, I, I'll give it an eight. I think I had a lot of fun time playing with you guys. And the overall, like the negative of the servers, once you get past that server problem, the game was fun. I thought, depending on, like I said before, if your care, your abilities are like the Necromancer, have you have a, a lot of crew with you as you play, then it, it's a lot more fun. I think you could play it, you could play it alone, but having a group of people with you makes it a lot more like enjoyable overall. I think I would say buy it later. I would say wait to make sure that the servers are working properly before you purchase this game. Because if the servers are anything like Overwatch 2, then you're going to buy a game that you won't be able to play for at least the first week of its release. So I think honestly waiting until the bugs and all that issues are settled would make sense. Or at least wait to see whether it's okay. 
right? Once you find out it's okay and everyone, and, and this beta isn't a smoke screen, like, you know, they could make a good beta, like a good first part of the game that you're playing that it's enjoyable. But if they, the rest of the game sucks, then that could be a problem too. So buy later because Blizzard has proven to me that Diablo hasn't had a good game in a while. So it's like, you can't just blindly give them support because you had a good time playing a beta. You got to wait and see whether this is actually landing the right way. If you're a big fan of Diablo, this should give you some hope that there is a possibility of a good thing down the line, even if possibly the, the monetization practices are going to be god awful. But at least you have a good core of the game that seems workable and seems like it's mirroring the old Diablo game. So at the moment, we'll see what happens when the game releases. Um, but Aki, I want to get your opinion next year. What was your rating and would you buy this now, later or not at all? Yeah, so I have it at an 8.4, so pretty close to you. I also have it at a buy later, and I would, if if you haven't played a Diablo, like I've never played this type of game, I had no idea what to expect. I was, uh, you know, pleasantly surprised at how much I did like it. Um, so if you did not play a Diablo, I would go back and play Diablo like two or three. I'm pretty sure one of those are remastered. You can at least get a feeling for the game, and I'm pretty sure they're very inexpensive right now. And then if you do like it, I think this Diablo that just came out or that's going to be coming out is going to be a good game again, as long as the servers are, you know, um, up to code or ready to go. Yeah. So, uh, Angelica, what'd you think overall here? Uh, go Diablo two, do not go Diablo three. Play the Diablo two. Um, I'm at an eight. I, um, I'm with you guys. I am going to go the opposite way though. I am going to say bye now. I do feel that, you know, what I saw from the beta was pretty strong to be a couple months out. The hope is that the server definitely makes me very nervous. Um, so I definitely agree with you there. I'd buy now cautiously on release date, um, but you know maybe give it an hour or two on when it releases to see how those servers are looking. But that is, you know, the gameplay was fun, and if you have some uh, people to play with, I do think it's a pretty enjoyable experience that you can lose hours. I mean, we lost. Yeah, we played uh, a lot. He went six hours, and we didn't really like wow. You know, like six hours was just gone like that, yeah. um, which which is always a good sign. But I'm nervous about the servers. I am nervous about monetization because they are pretty grubby. Um, and the loot is, is something that that needs to be looked at. But I'm going to say buy now cautiously. So let's jump to the next game. This one's relatively it, it's been out on PC for roughly two years, but it finally got its port to the Xbox. And that is Valheim. And Valheim is a very interesting game. If you don't know anything about it, similar to Minecraft and its its open worldness and really crafting from literally being half naked as Vikings, trying to prove yourself to Odin that you can meet for Ragnarok, basically. And, and it's kind of like that's like the whole premise of the story. Um, and you're out in this in this world trying to survive. And I kind of want to get your guys' opinions because we played this also on stream. You can find that in the description below. Uh, it was a fun time, but there are some things we got to address here. So let's start off with the good. I think the the cool thing about Valheim and these smaller games, like these are smaller indie level creations. And you could tell yeah. that the passion behind the project is there because the art style I thought was really cool. The look of it. And I, there are moments in the stream that I kind of just like looked out into the horizon because I was like, the look of the game, when on my end, it didn't have a lot of like the you know, rendering issues, but that's something that we will we'll definitely talk about in the next segment. But when it didn't have rendering issues and you could just look at the horizons or look at the landscapes, it looked pretty cool. It looked like the art style was there and it had like that kind of cartoonish kind of like, you know, like feeling of it. And the mechanics of the game are, you know, are, are I think they're all right. There's nothing like, I, there's nothing outrageous. Like I'm like, oh, this is the greatest thing I've ever played. It's like Minecraft. If you're expecting something of a survival like you're going on like the like the show like with with van grills or whatever like you know survive the wilderness like that's not it, it's not gonna about bear grills or whatever his name is it's not gonna what's gonna happen but Being naked and afraid or something <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying it's not gonna be like naked and afraid or like or whatever like not, nothing like that but you're gonna you're gonna get like a minecrafty game with that's viking themed right that's literally what it is gonna be about um and i thought i kind of like the way the vibes were the exploration just seeing what's out there and uh, i think that part was the cool part for me 
Um, what is your guys' opinion here? I want to get Legilica. What's your feeling of the good uh, that you felt? Um, well, when my game rendered correctly, it did look good. I mean, there was, like you said, times that it looked really well. But I also liked the, you know, the map. I thought it was a pretty decent sized map, and like it kind of gave you like a vast world type of feel um, when you played it. And obviously, it's a PC game ported to Xbox that came out this month. Um, you could kind of see it is. It doesn't feel fully ported, right? It, it, there, there's definitely, but what I liked about it was the map. And again, um, I liked kind of, it felt pretty vast for a small group making this game, right? You had like weather, you know, whether you were wet or dry, right? Whether you felt cold or warm, you know, like you had different aspects of eating different things, cooking different things. Like it reminded you of kind of like that Minecraft and kind of like grounded. Um, so um, on a smaller scale, but I think some of those aspects with the map and the environmental stuff, I think was cool. Yeah, they, they were pretty realistic for very cartoonish. Like you had to have smoke insulation out of your yeah. hut or else you could die from a smoking installation like they did a pretty good job with that now there's a lot of games that can't even pull that off right hockey what do you think overall as the good here yeah so there's only a few for me or a couple um and it's going to be one is going to be like langelico said the map if you actually looked i kind of watched the video before i played and, you, and if you looked at the map that it was a completed map it was actually unbelievably gigantic uh, you can you you know you can I'm pretty sure you can sail on ships and yeah you can go from from island to island so the map was very very large and the other thing is there was a lot to do so um, you know like you guys said you can cook food build houses uh, you know uh, there was a lot of ways to build a house a lot of just building material in general um, and then you know the animals and and different uh, variety of enemies as well was another good thing. Yeah, and and so what I I would say even the crafting I think the crafting that they yeah, had was very very yeah. a lot of things you can craft a lot of different materials to collect. Um, I felt like I was running out of stuff in my backpack right away. But let's talk about the bed, right? And I think when I'm thinking about the bed, we did mention before about the frame rate issues. There are definitely some things that they have to fix. I mean, this is not completely done. It's a game preview, so it's just no to like no readings on Metacritic for the, yeah nothing for, for, the, for the Xbox port. Nothing for the yeah. Xbox port. That's it's, why we're here, so that you don't we're have trying to. to. We're, we're trying to do it for you guys, so you guys know exactly what you're going into by playing it. Um, and I think that this game is limited. And my my biggest concern, this game is limited to what you can do alone, right? And that's something that I think is pretty evident right away. I think when all three of us are are you know exploring together, we're combating other groups. It got hard. It was not easy, right? And you have you can't even imagine fighting these higher level guards by yourself like i can't even fathom that concept um and exploring gaining materials by yourself i think this game is limited to be it needs to be a collective like as a group that you do something and i think that's something that might limit its ability to be played by groups because you have to have a group of people going into this together right if you don't then it's just gonna be it's not gonna be as fun i think and Maybe that's a negative. I think it's it's that, and I think the last thing for me is the UI struggles. I think this is built like a PC game. They did yeah. not get this ready enough yet for an Xbox port. You can tell that sometimes by the way that the game is, like where you have to click certain buttons to navigate from different parts of your screen. It's like, that's not like, you know, like I've played other games and I mentioned it on the channel, um, like Strategic Mind, the Pacific, or Strategic Mind, uh, Specters of Communism. They, those are PC games that were ported later to console. And you can tell by, well, you have to click buttons to move to different areas that it's not it's not made for console. Like that's how you can tell. And this game you can tell is the same thing. Granted, I am less frustrated with the UI of this game than I was with those two other games. But that is a, something of concern that they need to figure out a better way of navigating the menu that way. So that's my thing. I feel like my negative is the UI and I feel like being playing alone is is not as enjoyable as it, as, as it should be um but let's go with hockey next year what's your negative for this yeah so in the first 20 minutes i was playing by myself and i almost gave up on the stream uh yeah i had you helping me a little bit uh, on discord but uh, yeah definitely not a game to play alone uh, in my opinion definitely you can tell it's you can tell it's a pc game right it's you can tell it's definitely not ready for xbox yet um I mean, I couldn't put a roof 
on just a wall. Like I was just trying to build something very simple, you know, a little wall and then put a roof on the wall and I couldn't figure it out for 20 minutes. So I feel like they didn't really tell you how to do things or give you a good tutorial. I know that uh, crow or that raven was following you around, giving you, um, you know, some advice, but I just felt lost as soon as I dropped into the world. Yeah, there's no sense of no. like help. They just like no. go out there and yeah. go craft some stuff, right? And that was about it. So, Angelica, what'd you feel as a yeah, negative here? I, I agree on that. The the UI definitely um, getting zero help. I mean, we had chat who was more helpful than the Ravens were um, during the stream on kind of the next steps on what to take and what to do um, to survive this. And to me, the combat was so damn clunky at times um like you're swinging and, and the guy standing right in front of you and you wouldn't make contact with with the enemy and you know he would hit you and like when you're trying to you know hunt right and and you're you need to hit this animal that's running faster than you and the hit just doesn't collaborate like the hit boxes are not very smooth and it just did feel like minecraft um in that aspect Man, it was a struggle at times with the combat. Very frustrating um, at times, um, and I think just playing alone. I I can imagine playing alone would like feel like a chore with the grindiness and kind of put me to bed. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I was feeling too. But let's jump into our ratings and answering the question of where you should buy this. I mean, I I feel like this is a this game, is on game preview. Pass. This, yeah, is, this is on this Game, is game Pass, pass guys. So exactly yeah, sure. this is, yeah, this is a this is a this is on Game Pass at the moment. It's I think it's free to play overall. Uh, I'm not sure if it's on PlayStation. I, it could be. I th I know that it's a game. It's on Game Pass and it's a game preview moment right now. So it's not you didn't have to pay for it. So I think rating wise, I might be critical here, but I'm gonna give it a six point eight. I think it's right now. It's in a spot where it's it has some fun moments. I'm not gonna lie. It had we had some fun on stream playing Valheim, but it was also a lot of frustrating. Nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. To buy the, by itself, nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, nice. So twenty dollar game. I think it's six point six point eight around a seven is probably a good spot. I think for me, I think it's it's a game that you can have fun overall, but it's it's something that you need to have a group of people with, and I think it, it's definitely better on PC than it is on console at the moment. Not sure what else they're gonna add to it to make it more complete because it's still a game preview, so it's not officially released yet. Um, I guess you can make the case of that, but I think a six point eight to seven is a good one, and I feel like you should you should buy this later. If anything, you got to see how the end result of this game preview is, and I think that it could be a lot of fun with friends. I wouldn't buy it if you're gonna play by yourself, right? It, it, I, I know people have, but I know me personally, I, I I wouldn't have. I wanted to try it out. I heard a lot of good things about it on the PC, and wanted to say, hey, what what, what is it like on the Xbox? And I, you know, like 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 Linjella Kill said. There's no Metacritic review of the Xbox port. So this is, if Metacritic wants to take the Mars Band crew as their Metacritic score, I'm going to give it around the, I'm going to give it a 6.8. I think it has some good concepts, but they do need to improve some things on the console. So, Haki, I want to get your opinion here. What's your rating and where would you buy this? So this gets my Eternals video game score, which is a 5.6. This is my Eternals <laughs> video game. Um, I just... I was lost right off the bat. Playing with you guys was uh, was okay. You know, we had some fun, but I definitely would not play it alone. I would not spend twenty dollars on it. Um, I would not buy this game unless you have Game Pass and you can play it for free and you have friends that can play it. Give it a shot if you all want to. You know, again, play for three or four hours and maybe get to the first boss like we did. It was it was all right, but again, a lot of uh, a lot more you know bad than good, unfortunately for me. Well, Angelica, what did you think here? Um, I'm at a six. I think, again, $20 is probably the most I would ever pay for a game like this. Um, so it kind of reads at my very high, at my threshold for, for this type of game. If it was any more, I would not buy it. Um, and if you have friends, I would make the purchase. But to me, in the perfect world, I would buy later. If you have Game Pass, that would be the time to play it um, with friends. I don't think playing it alone is a lot of fun. So I will say that. But now let's transition to the last review and we got to turn to langella kill our destiny 2 lightfall correspondent yeah. you played you played destiny 2 lightfall i i didn't get to jump into it yet i've been yeah. so busy doing 
Wall Long and all these other game reviews and you know content stuff. So yeah, you did I pay wanted, for it though. <laughs> I did pay for it, so I definitely yeah. want to play it at some point and kind of just gauge your feel. So you're kind of giving me a preview here too. So yeah. what was your what did you feel was your the good, the bad, and give me your rating here. Well, I'll just give it. You know, this has been out a month now, right? So, you know, when this came out, you know, the initial review, and we brought it pretty much when it came out. Yeah. Um, but the initial thoughts from around the Destiny community was not very good, and so when you hear all that and you're just thinking, man, there's these other games that I could play, kind of got pushed to the back burners. But I finally got to it, and this was a forty nine ninety nine purchase um for this dlc this is the 10th dlc installment for lightfall and i'd imagine all the diehards have already played it so maybe they can cope with me at this point and if you haven't played it stay tuned for this uh but it wasn't well received i mean in metacritic it was rated a 70 on console 71 on open critic the user score wasn't a lot of user scores at a 3.2 um so pretty pretty gross and now this is actually not the worst so i will give it this everyone crying that this is the worst one that they put out people forget about the first dlc and the second dlc that um destiny 2 had which was curse of osiris which was a 57 on metacritic so it doesn't reach that level and warmind dlc which was 63 but this is a step back from what it was the last three dlcs especially the witch queen which was very highly rated yeah. at 87 um, and before that, Beyond Light was 77. So, again, the last couple DLCs, this takes a step back. And boy, guys, the story is really where I want to start with. It's boring. It's very boring and confusing. And when you mix those two things together, it feels like a chore to get through. And so, again, just a lot of confusion. I love the different aliens. You know, it gives you the kind of the, this was always what I liked about Destiny was kind of that mass effect where there's different you know, there, there's different groups, there's different aliens in the galaxy, um, different creatures. But with Mass Effect, they had character. And in Destiny, they don't. And that's the problem. And when you bring in the Traveler, which is this magic ball in the air who haven't played Destiny yet, this ball does so many different things and weird things that it, it's hard to describe what it is. And now they have this Traveler again as the main part of this story, um, which, which is another what they call the Whisperer. Um, which is part of the bad guy group, is also a very confusing character. So it's just a lot of confusion, and it's just not very enticing. Now, to give it some, it did include nine. Uh, you got three exotic new weapons, six new exotic armor pieces, which is similar to uh, the Witch Queen, but the Witch Queen had more. It had 14 total, right? So it had a little bit less content. The story wasn't that good. This wasn't a complete shit to bed um, by the makers of Destiny, but this was a wet fart. Yeah. So, would you? So, I mean, we already bought it, but would you give this? <laughs> yeah, we already bought it. We already bought it. I would hold if, you would, parts. if you would, if yeah. you were to tell those people who have not played this yet, would they yeah. buy it now? Buy it later? Well, or just don't buy it. It is not worth forty nine ninety nine. It's not worth thirty nine ninety nine. Quite frankly, I wouldn't buy this unless this was twenty dollars. But they did do a thirty three percent off this week. They announced it, um, which would have saved us quite a bit of money buying yeah. it. Um, including a 25% off on the annual pass. But this one, to me, is the best offer. 50% off the Shadow Keep Beyond Light and Witch Queen DLC. So I would probably look to buy that before I buy Lightfall, um, which I don't think it's worth anything more than $20. Well, there you have it, guys. First, this is the first installment of the crew review where we break down those those games we didn't get to really talk about thoroughly before as a crew. And tell us what do you what do you think overall about some of the breakdowns we had and please let us know in the comments below and obviously if you haven't done so yet if you like this type of content consider hitting that thumbs up and subscribing to kind of catch up on any new videos that we do drop and join us on twitch which is located in the description below we do two to three streams a week and love us i would definitely love to see you there and obviously join us on all of our socials also located in the description below but until next time this is mars brand along with the mars Band crew signing off Peace out, guys.